going on. Let's quickly run through what happened in 2019. Uh, as it says, the best year ever in terms of savings. Uh, looking at the results, you can see here from electricity, thermal energy, water, um, both uh, the 2019 savings results compared to 2018, and then the incremental, the additional savings in, uh, uh, in, in uh, over 2018 to 17. So on the right-hand side, it's 2018 versus 17 results. So on the left-hand side, it's 19 versus 18. And if you want to get the overall picture, you can approximately add those two together as to how far you have come in, in two years. So the, you know, we're particularly um, pleased with the emissions, the growth in emissions reductions, which again is the, is the primary motivator for uh, greening healthcare doing uh, what it's doing. But again, a great year and uh, all we do is keep the score. So, uh, you know, kind of thanks and congratulations to everybody out there. We also had the largest number ever of, um, of top savers. So the 5%, achieving 5% total energy savings in a hospital is not easy because demands tend to creep up continuously and, uh, and there's a lot to pay attention to. Uh, and we've never had 11 hospitals kind of make that result before. These are always the feedstock for where our case studies come from. So the, the, the orange, uh, the darker orange colored, uh, these are case studies that we're working on now with the various hospitals. Uh, you can see Humber River, already the most energy efficient acute care hospital, climate adjusted uh, that we could find in North America that just improved like dramatically more, another 28% reduction in emissions. What they're doing in terms of getting the most out of uh, out of their low carbon plants, the way they were built is extraordinary. There's lessons there for, for all hospitals because we're all going to go down that path. Uh, Milton District likewise seen very substantial. Uh, again, another new hospital, very substantial savings. Markham Stovall, a continuation of the program that, uh, that Alan's been working on there. And uh, we want to give you kind of quick updates on just the energy profiles of three other hospitals. Um, but again, all of these become the basis on which we will be uh, working with you and getting the stories put together so we can find those measures that can be replicated. So we've heard from uh, Rob Simpson in the past on uh, the, the, the extraordinary work happening at Ontario Shores in engaging the operations staff. Um, that program has come to another level of uh, efficiency and these profiles are always important. Uh, the, uh, if you look on the left hand side there, the, the blue dots below the red dots, you all know this, are savings. So the big summer, if you like the summer of 2019, We'd reported previously, Rob told us at the end of last year about the improvements to chiller operations and manual set point adjustments. And we'll come back to that later. But over the past winter, Rob, there's been some dramatic gas savings um, and really interested in what added to that. And if you look at the targets at the bottom there, your cooling now is already below target and you still got room to improve, uh, but your base gas consumption those last few months on the right hand side there look like you're pretty close to cutting um, your base gas consumption in half. So what, 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 did, what did that look like, Rob? So yeah, back in um, yeah, November of 19, uh, we took under a big project to replace the, uh, the dish machine in, in the kitchen. And, around the, and that came off steam and it's now electric. Uh, so that's a big load off our steam plant. And around the same time, we started looking at uh, the operation of our steam plant because after that came off, there's a couple little pieces of equipment left in the kitchen. Um, and the only other load is our domestic hot water. We have uh, uh, steam to hot water um, heat exchangers. So we really started looking at what kind of pressures we ran our, our uh, steam boilers at. Um, when I, you know, to, going back two years, we used to run them at uh, 120 PSI. And uh, about, you know, six months after I was here, we kind of cut that back to 90. And then once we replaced the dish machine, um, we kept with the 90 and then we used kind of a night, back, night setback uh, strategy to turn it back to 60 pounds, kind of outside regular hours. And right now we're, we're everything, we run everything at, at 60 pounds. Um, and that's kind of the lowest that we want to go. We've talked to our, our maintenance contractors on the boilers and they don't want to go too much lower than that. They're worried about doing some damage 
um, to the to the internals of the steam plant. So that's kind of where we're at now, and I think that uh, is where really most of our, uh, if not all of the savings, is is coming from. So what's extraordinary to us is the magnitude of those savings, which don't seem to involve very much in air handling unit control. So usually we see big gas savings attached to ventilation. Here it looks like process load. So we're really interested to see how this unfolds through the summer of this year and into next winter. And uh, just because it looks like your gas numbers are going to fall into line with where the, uh, the targets are and you, you move straight to the top of the chart. So, uh, so this will be an unfolding story for us, but it's an unusual energy profile in terms of how and where you've made savings. And certainly this dishwasher issue is one that we're going to follow, just how much energy do they account for? And when you put a new, better one in, how much does that improve? And so Rob, congratulations on your 2019 5% award winning. You can hang it on the wall with the other awards that you've Thank got. Thank you, it's already up there. Thank you. And I'm sure it is. And I think you share that with your operating staff so they can take some pride in the great work they're doing too. Um, we, we weren't able to connect uh, with, with David to catch up on, uh, it looks like a second round of stories at William Kajau and we, uh, or, or Lac La Biche. This again is a, a, is a smaller hospital. Um, and um, David's work was characterized by, uh, just like Rob, how much he'd been able to engage his operations staff with a new, as they say, uh, uh, with a better building automation system, they could change the focus on energy, um, got good corporate support from Harry and his team. So this obviously is in Alberta. But we'd reported previously on five years prior to this with really big savings. And if again, if you look at the targets at the bottom now, their gas consumption recently has, has dropped very substantially. We got straight greens on gas right now. So it means that they've met both the base thermal and the heating thermal targets. And really the only area left is cooling electricity. And uh, we'll continue having conversations with David around the cooling plant and how it's operating and, uh, and where the additional improvements could be there. But here's another hospital that's top saver in 2019 and is getting close to meeting the targets. Uh, that was set. So uh, this plaque has been sent out to uh, to Alberta to uh, David, hopefully again hanging proudly on the wall. And more recently Headwaters, and we'll come back to Headwaters as part of the low carbon heating plant discussion earlier, uh, but Janet uh, Janet recently taking over in, uh, in the Director of Facilities role and working on the challenges again of a kind of mid-sized hospital, an older facility that uh, uh, that has some definite infrastructure issues. And once again, the work that they've been doing, you can see the magnitude of the gas savings. Um, on the right-hand side, you can see the, the, the significant wintertime uh, electricity savings. And what's, uh, what I know Amadeep is working on uh, with the hospital right now is the savings are coming in the wrong place. They still have uh, very significant cooling electricity savings potential. They're running at 4.1 kilowatt hours a square foot. Uh, the target is 2.3. And in the gas side, they're making the savings in the winter time, where in fact it's their summer gas use that's perhaps as much as double what it should be. So this is a really intriguing emerging story, uh, but it's one that's gonna get richer as we get to understand what's left to be done there. But all three of these hospitals Kind of come from our top savers and they're all headed in different ways towards uh, again meeting their targets to moving up to the top of the benchmark chart and if you're wondering what uh, kind of motivates us at greening healthcare this is exactly the stuff it's seeing ideas put into practice learning from them and sharing that information and congratulations to janet and her team at headwaters for for, for their award for the uh, 